Hello everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. My name is Katie Carson. I am the Duchess of Suds here at this channel. And today we're making a cow soap. I will admit it, absolutely nobody asked for this soap, but I'm really excited about it because one, Will loves cows. We have a lot of neighbors that have cows in our back pasture. They have them in front of our house. They have them on either side. There's cows everywhere. And they often put the mama cows with their babies out in our back pasture. So it's so much fun to see them. So there's reason number one. Also, reason number two is because a long, long time ago when Caroline and I were Dude, how old do you think we were? Oh, like six and nine. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever the Nintendo Wii came out, right? And they came out with the Mario Kart for the Wii. There is a track on that Mario Kart called Moo Moo Meadows. And I just, that name is just wordsmithing excellence. Caroline's brother became the self-proclaimed, I might admit and add, uh, Lord of the Moo Moo Meadows. And that has lived in childhood lore for she and I for probably the rest of our life. So there are many things that just came together to create what is the perfect cow soap. I hope you guys enjoy. Without further ado, let's go ahead and make it. <laughs> Okay, you guys, out of all of the soaps this month, this is the one I am most excited about making. I will say, I still like the smell of the bone apple tea, <laughs> of the clover apple tea soap, but as far as design goes, this one is bringing something different to the table. Let's go ahead and blend this up with our stick blender on high until just past emulsion. Okay, so for coloring, it's super, super simple. I'm only going to use titanium dioxide and black oxide. I went ahead and added the fragrance oil to these containers. Today I'm using meadow grass and wild flowers. This is from Wholesale Supplies Plus. It smells like a green meadow in full bloom in the sunshine, a perfect place for a cow to be. I have blended these, well, a little more than I normally do because to do kind of a cow print design, I need the batch to be a bit thicker, but it's looking about how I want it to. So it's time to pour into our two brambleberry molds. I'm putting this on a slight angle so that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna start, it's probably still too runny. Yeah, kind of. I'm gonna start by pouring a little bit of black down one side here. It is thickening up quickly though, so that's a good sign. Then I'm gonna wipe off my spatula pretty well. And then my white is thicker, which is actually good. I'm gonna pour it down one side and it's just gonna displace that black so that hopefully the end result looks kind of gloopy. We don't want really any swirling or sharp edges here. It should all look just, yeah, pretty gloopy. And now that I have about half of the batter in, I can add my little pink noses. So these are soap columns. They're made with cold process soap using an oval mold from Wholesale Supplies Plus. You can just search oval silicone column mold and it will come up. I'm gonna press down just a little bit. This is, this is the single greatest soap I've ever created. <laughs> All others pale in comparison. Okay, everybody's in. So now on the opposite side, I'm gonna add in some more black, just like that. And I'm not gonna tap it down, just like this. And then carefully, so as not to disturb it. <laughs> Hey. 
it took a little while to clean this all up, but there you go. There it all is. And now I'll go ahead and get the soap frosting ready. We're actually back the next day to pipe this soap. I had to go exercise and finish up a few things around my house and ta-da. Yes, you can pipe on your soap loaves the next day. You can see these are fully saponified. All I do is spritz the top with 90% rubbing alcohol and then the first layer of soap frosting, I make sure it's a little bit more runny and I found that it adheres absolutely perfectly the next day. We're gonna start with my Atiko 869 tip. We're gonna do one row of white frosting, then a row of black, and then a little white dollop on the top. And you know what? I'll do it. I'll do it Simeon's way. <laughs> Whenever you're doing layered frosting like this, you kind of have to be a little more careful judging how much you put on each layer just because you're more likely to run out of a frosting color and then it won't be even all the way down. Fill it in. All right, now for round two, we have our black soap frosting. This already looks so cute. I should do this more often. It honestly wouldn't even be that difficult. I could do three different colors with ease because the top two layers, so this row of two, and the very, very top layer is the same amount as the bottom layer. So you basically just say half your frosting is the first layer, and then you can split the remaining half and put one third on the top and two thirds on the uh, second row. That's pretty easy math, even when you're moving quick with a soap frosting that's hardening up. All right, and now for the top dollop. Oh yes, this looks exactly how I envisioned it would. I love it when things turn out right. Honestly, this would be a really cute look for an updated Oreo soap. I could do black on the top, white in the middle, and then another black dollop on the top, and it would look like the middle of an Oreo cookie. Ah, okay. Now for the best part, the horns. <laughs> you know I had to add them. So this is a crescent moon silicone mold that is cut in half. You can get this mold on Amazon. I think Wholesale Supplies Plus also has it. And then I used Aztec Gold in low sweat, clear melt and pour to get this color. Oh my gosh, this is everything. So to make sure this looks like a cow, I am gonna push the embed quite a ways in. We don't want devil horns on this cow. <laughs> As previously stated, this was a favorite track from a Mario Kart video game that we used to play all the time. We thought the cows just looked so funny. They're so bubbly looking. Also, the name Moo Moo Meadows is hilarious. <laughs> I told my brother whenever I submitted this design, I don't care about anything else. This design has to get made. I don't care if it sells well. I don't care if it's too niche and too weird. This is a soap from the heart and we have to make it. And he was like, well, there's no arguing with that. <laughs> As many of you probably know, we have a lot of cattle here in Texas. It's one of the things we do. I am actually surrounded by cattle farmers. All of my neighbors have lots and lots of cows, so we get to see them all the time. And another person that lives in our community has a longhorn. And when I tell you, that thing looks menacing. It's probably the sweetest baby, but I'll tell you, Seeing him from a long way away, I'm like, listen, I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> Last one. Perfect. Okay, let's spritz this with rubbing alcohol just to keep those embeds nice and shiny. I'm not worried about soda ash on this soap, actually. <laughs> and I also don't have to worry about dissolving any glitter when I put this on top. Okay, awesome. And here is... <laughs> It's the top of Moo Moo Meadows. I'll bring you guys in for a close up. Uh, what can I say? It's my magnum opus. <laughs> That's a pretty good idea right here of what it's gonna look like when cut into. I cannot. All right, we'll be back in 18 to 24 hours to cut the cow soap after this quick commercial break. We are back a few days later. 
<laughs> you guys know how it is. Sometimes you just leave things to sit and cure for quite some time and it's not 18 to 24 hours. But I've lined up our little cow soap with all the cutters here. I'm gonna press it down a little harder than usual because it has been sitting for a little while longer. Pull one out of the middle. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So we have our little white and black spots for the cow. We've got the top that I just love the coordination on the top and then the little horns. And so all we have to do now is put a soap stamp on the nose. So here's how I'm going to stamp them. I have my little acrylic stamping tool here. We actually have a new stamp supplier who's in the United States. They had a little bit of faster shipping times. We still love our original supplier, but you know, sometimes you have to change just because of shipping times. I will leave you guys the new supplier that I'm using down in the description box below in case you need a custom stamp for any of your art projects. And then using a little bit of black oyster from Mad Micah's, I'm just gonna tap off the excess. I'm gonna place it in the middle of our little nose here and then press down. It's really easy to do. Wiggle it back and forth and then pull straight up. So it's really, really easy to do. If you guys have never used a stamp with your cold process soap, I highly recommend it because it's such an easy way to just glam up the front of your bars. There's a lot of people who like to use them with their logos. We do have one for the Royalty Soaps logo that we put on some other natural soaps that we make. Last one here, just press straight down, wiggle back and forth and pull straight up. And there you go. Our little cow soaps are finished. They honestly look so cute. I'm so pleased with the way specifically the spots look. And having that big gloop of white and the big gloop on top, I think it's just, it's just perfect. So question of the day, what's your favorite type of cow? Now listen, there's lots of different types. I like the little mini cows. I don't know what they're called, but they look so velvety and fuzzy. Anyway, comment your favorite type of cow down below. Can't wait to see. I know this is the question of the day y'all all expected. It's very important. So many things depend on your answer. So let us know. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the making of Moo Moo Meadows. It will be available with the Honey Sunday collection on the first Saturday in April, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, royaltysoaps.com. I hope you guys, yeah, really enjoyed it. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, like going out there and identifying your favorite cow. You didn't know there were so many types out there, did you? What's your favorite cow? Very important to know. Maybe you need to go figure that out, but I don't really care what you do. Just be sure you do something fun for yourself and I will see you next time. So until then, have an absolutely royal day and bye for now. Thank you.